Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. We will today look at this Intel Black Ops CPU which I received from a user actually quite a while ago. Once I received it, I did a, like a quick test to see if it can post, everything worked out fine, but I had issues entering Windows, so I kind of postponed it to today's video. And that should be quite exciting. If we take a look at the heat spreader, it reads Intel Black Ops 4.6 GHz, and that's about it, because this is not a retail CPU. Has never been on sale, and yeah, there is not a lot of information about this out there. Eric, who sent this CPU to us, already told me in his initial email that he had some issues with this CPU to get it to run. And also Linus Tech Tips did a video about this type of CPU, not the exact one, but the same kind of like Black Ops CPU about three or four years ago. And he also had a lot of trouble getting the CPU to run, to get full utilization also, because it was running like rather high voltage, because this is a six core CPU, which back then was not normal. Like desktop CPUs at best case had four cores and this with six cores was high end desktop. And then also with 4.6 gigahertz, rather high clock also required insane voltages and insane cooling. But let's just throw it on the board and then see if we can get it to run. We will try to run this on a Rampage 4 Black Edition, which for my opinion is like the best board you could have for this socket also. We will run 2666C10 Corsair memory and these Vengeance Pro Series memory modules were never available for sale in this configuration as far as I know, like with this specific Samsung IC bin. And I mean, those were dual channel kits, but you could also run them in a quad configuration. I received them back then from Corsair as samples. I'm still very thankful for that because these are, I think, the best yeah, memory sticks you can get for this type of platform. Just assembled this with this Aqua Computer water block simply because I'm expecting high temperatures, also a high temperature load, like high heat load, because this CPU, from the information you can gather, is supposedly running with 250 watt TDP. And I guess like an average like 48, 20K had a TDP of like 130 watt, so yeah. I'm expecting like a lot of heat. And what I want to compare is running this with a 4090. I mean, I'm expecting a heavy CPU bottleneck and I also already prepared comparison benchmarks for Ryzen 5 7600, also a 13600K, mainly because both are also six core CPUs, same as the Black Ops CPU and also a i3 12100, simply because it's like a smaller CPU, it costs less and just for comparison reasons. So that should be quite exciting. For the first test assembly, just running off a smaller GPU to see if everything works fine. That looks pretty good, yep. Okay, so we have the Rampage for Black Edition and a genuine Intel CPU. Pretty sad that it's not reading Black Ops CPU, would have been quite nice. A Black Edition board with a Black Ops CPU, like the perfect combination. Okay, so we can already boot into Windows, so that's looking promising. I just started the recording because I just wanted to show the CPU Z screen of the CPU, of the readout and everything, and it, it immediately crashed, so yeah. There's one interesting thing I noted. I mean, you can see the CPU speed read out here with 4.6 and the min CPU speed with 1.2 gigahertz. You can also read like CPU microcode and stuff. But if we go to CPU power man management control, Usually it would also list a turbo mode in here, which you need for overclocking, but seems not to exist on here for whatever reason. Just disabling these to always have the max CPU speed present. This really is insane. It's the same with what Linus showed. This CPU like on auto is detected with 1.55 volt. That it's like insanely high because back then, I think you saw voltages somewhere between 1.1 to maybe 1.25, highest maybe 1.3. That's like also like a manual overclock voltage, but 1.55, like wow. By the way, I loved this menu. Like with the GPU dim post, you could easily see what kind of devices are installed. And I mean, nowadays this would be very useful. You could even list like what type of NVMe SSDs are installed in which slot and like what speed they're running at. Same for the dim post, like that was an amazing feature. I really miss this. I'm not sure why this is not present or like easily presented in most of the boards. This CPU is definitely not that easy to handle because just, just applying stock settings with memory running at like a decent speed, I always had zero, zero at post. Not sure why. And now it tells me overclocking failed. Yeah, seems like I have to play around with this a little longer. 
One thing that's also kind of worrying to me is that this uh, DRAM CD voltage is always showing like zero volt or like not available. Yeah, not sure. Could be a readout error or it could actually be a big problem. So the issue I have with this CPU right now, and I've been having this for like an hour, so I'm just in BIOS, basically default. Then I'm adjusting some settings like maybe ratios, voltages, whatever. And whenever I apply, this happens. You gotta be kidding. Like, like literally, I've been trying this for like an hour and it always shows zero, zero. And now it seems to post. Well, so much about that. It's again overclocking failed. Honestly, I'm about to lose it for this CPU because I also have to tell you that yesterday, like preparation for this video, I spent over five hours trying to get into Windows because like I only had this Rampage for Black Edition and this Black Ops CPU for the socket. I didn't have any other Ivy Bridge CPUs anymore. And like I was stuck at like the very basic stuff. I couldn't enter Windows 10. Like whenever it starts like loading with this like tiny circle, it immediately showed a BSOD, like, like different kinds, like like page fault and like USB and like all kinds of errors, which was not consistent. Then I tried different SSDs. I tried to reinstall Windows. I tried Windows XP 7, 10, 11. It even came that far that I tried Linux which also did not work. It showed some kind of like kernel, I don't know, error, which did not look great. And then overnight, I managed to organize this 4820K, which I found locally on eBay here. So I picked it up in Berlin this morning to just double check if the board is broken or maybe, maybe the memory is broken. And like I inserted the 4820K and like immediately everything was running. I didn't change any kind of setting. I then repeated all the benchmarks I already prepared with the other CPUs, like Cinebench and different games and stuff. Everything working out fine with the 4820K. Then again, I started shooting this video and I tried to get the Black Ops CPU working again. And as you could see on the video, we like first try were able to boot Windows, which I like couldn't get to work yesterday within five hours. And now like, <laughs> I think I spent one more hour and I'm exactly back at where I was yesterday that I cannot enter Windows anymore. And like I even downclocked the CPU to like 2.8 gigahertz, like very low voltage and everything, downclocked the memory. I even ran like single channel memory. <sighs> Sometimes it's just very frustrating. Not even kidding. Another two hours later and I even don't know how I made it back into Windows. Like I tried a lot of default settings and stuff and like you could see memories even running like fully stock. Like this is this is terrible memory settings, but I also tried different BIOS versions like uh, 0A01 was the latest and I tried 07 something. Now I'm back at 06 something. I made it to Windows with like four gigahertz and 1.56 volt. I will now try to get Turbo V Core maybe to work so I can maybe adjust some kind of voltage or something. I also like quickly want to try Cinebench R23, even though it might like crash or fail or whatever. But I mean, look at the CPU package power draw. Like for this gen, this was typically the load scenario for a normal CPU and this is idle, like close to 100 watt. That's just because of this insanely high core voltage. One thing you should also note is that you can already see that just by counting the tiles because this CPU is a pure 6-core and it's also just a 6-thread CPU, so it does not feature hyper-threading, which was like a full-out standard at that time. Now if we look at the power consumption of 160 watt roughly, what's like blowing my mind is if we look at the temperatures and honestly, like this could be some kind of readout, mistake, whatever, because like 1.55 volts and 160 watt and this is like reading like below 50 degrees Celsius. It just doesn't seem right. What's also very interesting is that now suddenly the CPU is running only at 3.9 gigahertz. I guess it's running a much higher temperature than what is actually read out here. In this condition, the Intel Black Ops CPU delivers 4,200 points in Cinebench R23 with a power consumption of 164 watt. As comparison, a manually overclocked 4820 CPU, which is just a four-core CPU but features hyper-threading, will reach about the same multi-threading score, 
with half the power consumption. And again for comparison, with an i3-2100, which costs about 100 euro in Germany, the i3 will achieve twice as much points in Cinebench R23, while only pulling 56 watt on average. Now if we look at a 13600K, it just delivers six times more multi-threading performance with 24,400 points. This CPU really, it, it has so many issues. I tried so many things, like right, right now I'm just running dual channel instead of quad channel, and at least I'm getting to the point where I can consistently, like not instantly get a BSOD, but at a point where like my like user is loaded, then like typically, at, yeah. Pretty much exactly like this. So what I want to try now is actually make use of slow mode switch because if the like CPU is heavily unstable, the like really last thing I want to try is get to the Windows loading screen, flip the slow mode switch to like get the CPU clock all the way down and this way maybe have it to boot. So what I try now is flip the slow mode switch and just get it all the way down to 800 megahertz to keep it hopefully stable so I can do some kind of configuration. Okay, like, I just cannot get it to work, at least with this setup, and it's almost been two days that I'm working on this. It's just so frustrating, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. And the last thing I want to try right now is this, like, X79GD65, which is the board I just purchased this morning on, like, eBay locally, and... Yeah, I might try it with like two or three different BIOS versions because there's always a possibility with this like non-serial production CPU that it might just work like randomly better on a different board. So let's see. Now finished setting up the second test system and this is really the last hope. I'm like really curious to see if there's anything that works better now. So far, that was actually a bit smoother than on the Rampage 4 Black Edition. But let's see if we can get into Windows at all. Mm -hmm. Nice. Not so nice. I'm giving up. After two days, and I think I managed to get into Windows about four times, pretty much always in default state. Whenever I touched anything, B-clock, voltages, some kind of memory configuration, anything, it would not work anymore to enter Windows. And if I tried to also adjust something in Windows, like with Turbo V Core, also wouldn't work. So yeah, I think I've wasted enough time for this. And I'm, yeah, I would agree with Linus that this is pretty much an overclocker's nightmare, the CPU, because you, you spend so much time and you cannot get anything out of it, like nothing entertaining, neither for you nor for myself, because I mean, I like debugging, but there has to be some kind of progress that if you adjust things, you like usually figure out what works and what doesn't work, but here it's so random. Yeah, I think you just need like a, a different CPU and like mainboard configuration. Maybe this was validated on some kind of like internal test board with a specific BIOS or something and that might work, but with like retail BIOS and like these boards, no chance to get it to work. But I think we can still look at some of these benchmarks I did with the 4820K. Could still be interesting to see some kind of Ivory Bridge E performance, like a high-end desktop performance from 10 years ago versus some more recent CPUs. In times for extreme, the performance ratio is very similar to what we already saw earlier in Cinebench R23. A recent i3-12100 with four cores and eight threads will perform twice as good as an Ivy Bridge eCPU from 2013. And keep in mind, we're looking at the 4820K already in an overclocked state of 4.5 GHz. The performance difference in Remnant from the Ashes is as expected smaller, but still we can see a decent CPU bottleneck. And keep in mind, we're looking at 1440p resolution. The 13600K is actually performing quite well and also quite efficient, especially if we keep in mind how much power it was drawing in R23. But with 73 watts on average and with 22 minimum FPS more than the Ryzen 5 7600, really not bad. But looking at the 4820K, 
again with 4.5 gigahertz. I mean, the game would be playable, but with 49 minimum FPS, it's not that enjoyable. So we're switching to PUBG with 1080p resolution. So we're moving much more into the CPU bottleneck region. And the 13600K in combination with the 4090 is actually producing quite impressive 523 FPS on average. And if we pay more attention to minimum FPS, we see only half of the performance on the i3-12100 versus the 13600K. Quite interesting though, if we now look at the 4820K overclocked to 4.5 GHz, it can actually deliver more FPS than the i3, but at the price of twice as much power draw. And also if we look at the minimum FPS, we can actually see that it delivers 50% less than the i3. So yeah, that's it with Intel Black Ops. I still hope you enjoyed this video, even though I couldn't get it to work in the state I wanted to, to get some kind of like decent benchmarks, except for the single Cinebench R23, which we could deliver. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. I still hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.